here's your host, Zeta Christian. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Page One. I'm Zeta Christian. Tonight, I have two guests. One of them is a law enforcement officer for over 20 years. The other is a sixth grade English teacher who is also a published author. And together, they have written a workbook about internet safety. This book is for children and for parents. Now, this book is not yet finished, but the subject is so important, I wanted to have them on the show now to talk about it, and we'll have them back later when the book is out. So join me in welcoming, first, Scott Driscoll. Scott, thanks very much for being on the show tonight. My pleasure. And Laurie, thank you very, very much for being on the show cool. and for arranging to have Scott join us. Um, I know several people have, uh, might know you also as a crew member on page one and full bloom and they might have seen you here on the show as a guest to talk about the Charter Oak Romance Writers and also to talk about your own book Finding Atticus which is being used as a curriculum in the sixth grade. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I am so pleased that you're both here and I mention all of that to show that you have interesting credentials and, and I love the way that they have combined. Laurie, your work in the classroom and Scott, your work for more than 20 years in law enforcement. So, um, Scott, let me start with you here. How did you meet Laurie? I mean, I've known Laurie for a couple of decades, but how did you meet her? Uh, through the school that Laurie works at, I teach uh, the drug education program, and met her a couple times, and we just became friends at that point. And we have a pretty good relationship. We kind of zing each other every once in a while, but we've become friends over the years. Yeah. And I've always had a lot of respect for what she does and the relationship that she has with the kids and how she has a rapport with the kids always uh, yeah, she had does. my respect. She does. Now, Laurie, I, if I remember correctly, when Scott was teaching the, we're talking about the D.A.R.E. program, is that correct? Correct. What was it that you did to enhance the student learning about that D.A.R.E. program? Well, I felt like there were things that they were doing in the science classroom with D.A.R.E. that could be complemented by activities in the English classroom, particularly theater activities that would be an extension of what they were doing in the, their program, the lessons that they were trying to teach. So as part of my master's program, I created a curriculum that could go with the original D.A.R.E. program. It has changed a little bit since then. And is that then what gave you the idea to, um, to do some kind of extra extra program when it came to internet safety? Is that a good correlation? Actually, this is Scott's baby, and I kind of oh. jumped on board with Scott. Oh, this was his okay. idea. All right, so Scott, let me ask you, how did all this start? What, what gave you the idea to teach this course on internet safety, not, not just for children, but for adults as well? Well, I was been lucky enough in my law enforcement career to be assigned to a couple task force. Mm -hmm. And through those task force, had some great investigations where we were going after the predators, people that were going after our children. And one thing that I realized that was missing was the education aspect. So I started to put together presentations to educate not just kids, but parents. And had this book in mind for a long time that could be a resource for parents, it could be a resource for the education systems to teach kids about this important topic. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I found out about Finding Atticus and talked to Lori and it was a great fit and we just started mm -hmm. working together and it's been a great combination ever yeah. since. Yeah, I imagine, Lori, because you and I have known each other for a long time through the Romance Writers, that you get a number of people coming up to you and saying, I've got this great idea for a book. and. And, and oftentimes, a person does have a wonderful idea, but part of, the, part of the joy of seeing a finished project is doing the work yourself. So my mm -hmm. guess is there have been a number of times that you, like me, have encouraged the person to, you know, where to find a resource to, to tackle the project. What made you, in this case, say, uh, this sounds interesting, I do want to be involved with this? Uh, well, at first, I said to Scott, I have to think about this because when you're collaborating, that's a whole different situation than when you're writing it alone. Yes, as it you is. Know. And uh, we have known each other a long time uh, in the classroom on the basketball court. We won't go there. <laughs> but, um, but I knew that uh, Scott also has great integrity. And it was just a matter of this is a book. It's a little different than talking in front of the kids. Could we do it together? And so we sat down a few times, talked about what 
the concept was that he had so that I could see if I could wrap myself around it because um, he's very inspired by that and so am I because I like to keep the students safe but um, just I needed to be able to buy into his idea and I liked his idea so then we decide on format after that and it took us a little while but once it clicked yeah, well, well, I want to stop you for a minute and, and, and go back. In fact, Scott, let me ask you, since this was your idea, okay. what was your initial idea for the format of this book? My initial idea was just to come up with some fictional vignettes, shall we call them, mm -hmm. that are based on real-life situations that I've seen kids go through. And that's what started the whole process. And Lori really wrapped herself around that, and then we kind of grasped it into not just what you can learn from that one thing, we, we added educational elements to it, that there's going to be quizzes or challenges that the families can do together. Um, and it kind of just snowballed from there. But my, my original thought was just fictional stories based on real life situations where we could kind of almost recap what, co what could have went wrong or the safety things we can learn from it. And Lori just took it to the next level and it's been, it's been a great process ever since. All right, Laurie, what's the next level? What happened from the idea of the fictional stories? I took Scott's vignette idea, and um, the first one I wrote, because we were still trying to work this out, it was kind of interesting, because he told me what he was looking for for this one chapter. So I said, okay, I can do that. And I went home, and I wrote it over the course of a few days, and I thought, okay, I think I've done what he wants. So I sent it off to him. And he was very kind when he wrote back and he said, you know, this wasn't exactly what I was looking for. So he said, I really thought it was going to be longer. And here I was afraid I was doing too much. And I said, oh, you want longer? No problem. And so the next time I sent it to him, he said, okay, bingo. That's what I had in mind. And, and, and the, this piece that you're talking about, that's the narrative story, like the right. fictional piece? Right. But then I came back to him at, after I wrote that, and I said, okay, the teacher in me is kicking in now. And uh, I knew what part he was going to be playing with his section of it. And I said, I feel like we need a little section where the parents and the kids have to stop and think about what they've read. And um, whether it's that they do a little puzzle or they have to answer questions, something where they can work interactively to, to go back at what they've read and think about it and decide how it fits into what they maybe are doing or what they've learned. All right, I'll, then I want to switch gears here just for a minute to put some of this shaping of the book into context. Scott, tell me, based on your experience in this whole world of internet safety, what are some of these dangers that children are facing? Well, I, when it comes to internet dangers, it depends on the age group of the kid, too. There's different concerns for each age group. You take a middle school kid who's just starting to get into Facebook and sharing personal information. They're opening up their, door, their doors and their lives to strangers. The high school kids are doing things that could come back to haunt them with education, colleges, employment. Oh. They're, they're not thinking that there's permanent records of what they're doing. And when someone posts something on the internet, it stays permanent. So there's different levels of safety depending on the age group of the child. Um, we're starting, to, I'm starting to see elementary school kids with social networking sites like Facebook and MySpace. They're way too young. That is where strangers are communicating with our kids. As the kids get older, they get a little more brave with what they share on there and some of the pictures they're sharing or videos they're posting. Employers and colleges and scholarship boards are going to be able to look at that sooner or later and it's going to weigh their decisions. All right, so on one hand you've got little kids who are vulnerable because they're ignorant of this world, yep. the, the world of the internet, and then you get the kids who are brave, foolishly brave maybe, and then you've got kids who are just simply not thinking that there are long-term consequences. Unfortunately there's a lot of not thinking, and not that, not that the kids are, are not smart, because they are. They're just not thinking there's long-term consequences. And as a kid, do we really think about long-term consequences? I know I did when I was a kid, but there's also not a permanent record of everything I did when I was a kid where if you put it on the Internet now, it's permanent. All right, there's a difference here, though. On one hand, something like that, something like the, the student, the high school junior or senior who's writing about being wasted over the weekend, it's showing just stupidity.